Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and um, I'm going to read a little bit more from our book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. We're getting through it. We're on Chapter 9, which is titled Plutonium, Public Health, and, the Te and Technological Arrogance. We are on a new subtitle called um, The Martin Marietta Company Study. <clears throat> The first meeting of this committee, which Tamplin attended in June of 1967, was related to the safety of a system designated as SNAP-19, which was to be launched along with a meteorological satellite from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The SNAP-19 was, was to supply auxiliary power to operate the meteorological satellite. At this meeting, we were apprised of a rather extensive safety study that had been performed by the Martin Marietta Company, a participant in aerospace research and development. As part of this overall safety analysis, the Martin Marietta Company indicated, for example, that for a particular type of accident which might occur in association with the launch of this vehicle, the burnup of the SNAP reactor in the atmosphere could result in some 40,000 fatal deaths in lung, from lung cancer. <clears throat> Tamplin's impression was, and still is, that the Martin Marietta Company had done quite a credible job on the safety analysis. He found fault with only two aspects of their analysis. One of the concerns that he had about their analysis was that the biological hazard associated with the plutonium oxide particles. The other concern was with the reliability figures, which purported to assess the probability of various types of accidents occurring. In the analysis, probability of various types of accidents associated with the launch and insertion of the space vehicle into orbit were given about one in a thousand. These fuckers. It was quite apparent to Tamplin that the space program in its entirety had never developed enough experience with the firing of various types of rocket missiles to come to the conclusion that any particular event would have a probability of occurrence as low as one in a thousand. Such probabilities can only be derived from experiments in which several thousands have launched. Several thousand such launches have been made. <clears throat> Therefore, the estimated probabilities associated with the various types of accidents in the launch and insertion sequence were a final figment, were a figment of analytical maneuvering, and as we shall subsequently see, these probabilities certainly had no relationship to the realities of the success of the SNAP systems in the launch and insertion process. New subtitle. Judgments should not be based on consequences. Excuse me, I'm going to read that again. Judgments should be based on consequences, not probabilities. Taplin contended at this particular meeting that one should ignore these probabilities, that one should look at the worst possible accidents that could occur. <coughs> I'm sorry. And the safety analysis and judgment concerning the advisability of firing the system into space should be based upon the consequences of that particular kind of accident occurring. He indicated clearly that he had no confidence in their probability estimates concerning the possibility of the accident happening, and that therefore the only rational approach was to base one's judgment upon the consequence if an accident occurred. At the time of this meeting, Tamplin had not looked into the biological sequences of the inhalation of particles of plutonium-238 or various other highly radioactive particles. In the course of the meeting, individuals such as Dr. Wright Langham of the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory presented their estimation of the hazards associated with inhalation of these highly radioactive particles. One of the things that developed much to Tamplin's amazement, was that the International Committee on Radiological Protection had given no guidance, 
had given no guidance whatsoever with respect to the hazards associated with these particles. Moreover, in its reports, the ICRP indicated that it did not know whether the hazard was greater or less than the hazard associated with the uniform irradiation of the entire lung. An even greater source of an amazement was that the major thrust of the individuals who presented data and arguments at this SNAP meeting was to indicate that the hazard from these plutonium oxide particles was significantly less than the uniform irradiation of the lung. Subsequent to this meeting, Tamplin returned to the laboratory and requested Do Donald Giesemann to investigate the hazard of these particles. His analysis of the risk from these particles was presented above. As a result of Giesemann's study, we feel that the hazard from these particles is far worse than the hazard from the uniform irradiation of the lung, as much as 100-fold. The major thrust of the members of the AECDBM committee was to discredit the biological risk aspects of the Martin Marietta safety analysis. What the fuck? The AEC, the committee is discrediting biological risk aspects from a, a scientific study. No wonder we are fucked. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. A preliminary draft of the committee's report concerning the safety of the SNAP-19 system was sent to Tamplin. In response to this draft, he made the following statement to Dr. H.D. Bruner, the committee chairman. Dr. Harry D. Bruner is an associate director for the Medical Research Division of Biology and Medicine at the AEC. Quote, I am returning the draft of the SNAP-19 committee report. I have several specific comments and one general comment. My general comment is that in reading the report, I felt that it gave the impression that these 35,000 curies were not of any real consequence, and arguments to the contrary, including Martin Marietta's estimates, were of little merit. I do not think that the existing scientific evidence is sufficient to warrant the creation of this impression." Unquote. Wow. The final draft of the committee ignored Tamplin's comments. It refuted, degraded, and downgraded the Martin Marietta estimate of the risk it implied that the overall probability of accident was so low that the biological hazard was therefore minimal and that the shot could be carried out as proposed. The various committees decided that the proposed firing of the meteorological satellite with the SNAP-19 reactor was a reasonably safe operation to undertake. Therefore, the system was launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base. But quite quickly, all of the masterfully cal calculated probabilities of accidents became nothing but figments of imagination because the rocket had to be blown up. The SNAP reactor fell into the waters of the San Clemente Islands near Santa Barbara, California. The next meeting held by the AEC DBM Space Nuclear Safety Committee relating to SNAP reactor systems was for the, let me, maybe I skipped a page. Okay, I'm going to start that again. The next meeting held by the AEC DBM Space Nuclear Safety Committee relating to SNAP reactor systems was for the system called SNAP-27 in August of 1968. These systems were to be placed aboard the moon landing vehicle in the Apollo portion of the space program. Again, the safety analysis, performed this time by General Electric, indicated that in certain accident situations with these SNAP-27 systems, very sizable numbers of fatal lung cancers could be induced in the humans on Earth. And did they give a crap? Hell no. You know, I don't really believe in hell, but this 
This fucking nuclear industry is beginning to make me really wish there was a hell. Giesemann's conclusions get a cool reception. That's the new subtitle. By this time, Donald Giesemann had spent considerable effort in analyzing the potential risk of plutonium oxide particles in the lungs. And we had come to the conclusion that, a hazardous, that the hazard associated with these particles was 100 to 1,000 times worse than was imagined or used in the Martin Marietta analysis for SNAP-19. Giesemann presented his analysis and conclusions to the DBM Safety Committee. The best that can be said is that he was listened to with deference. The members of the committee were unmoving in their opinion that the hazards of these particles were considerably less than that of the uniformly irradiated lung. Again, in association with the potential lung cancers that could be induced, the General Electric Company included the probability of the various accidents occurring. We argued, as we had before, that experience with these space systems was not sufficient to have derived the rather optimistic probabilities that were associated with their potential failures. We stated that the probability should not be considered in the safety analysis, that one should consider that the accident could happen and then evaluate the possible consequences. Judgment concerning the safety of the situation should be based upon the worst case possibility. We were told not to worry about it, that although SNAP-19 did fall into the waters off of Santa Barbara, we should recognize that we were now discussing man-rated systems and that the reliability of these systems was far greater than the reliability of the weather satellite systems. We were told that such accidents had probabilities much less than one in a thousand in this particular case. We persisted in our argument that these probabilities of failure should not be part of the safety analysis, that we simply had insufficient knowledge about the systems to be able to quote such high reliability. Moreover, we argued that in this particular case, an acceptable alternative to the procedure which was being followed by the SNAP-27 system, SNAP systems was available. It's kind of a tongue tire, man. The SNAP-27 systems were to be attached to the lunar excursion module, and therefore they would suffer the same fate as the lunar excursion model, which is LEM. We suggested that they should be that they should put the SNAP reactor in the command module with the astronauts. We argued that since so many millions of dollars had been spent in trying to protect the lives of these three volunteers who choose who chose of their own will to sit on top of a Saturn rocket it would be worth considering the expenditure of a small amount of money to protect the lives of several thousand individuals who might develop fatal lung cancer in the case of the in case the mission aborted this is really annoying uh, the next subtitle is called how snap accidents how snap accident probabilities misfired we insisted that the SNAP reactor should be put into the command module where it could be recovered along with the astronauts. The promoters of the project indicated that they were too far along in the design of the entire system to consider this as a possibility and that we shouldn't really worry about this because the system was so terribly reliable that the chances of these accidents were extremely remote indeed, so they said. Huckers, man. The final committee report on SNAP 27 was submitted to the AEC. It reflected the committee's confidence in the reliability of these systems and also its confidence that the hazard of plutonium-238 particles was less than that of uniformly distributed doses to the lungs. As a consequence of re receiving this final report, Tamplin wrote again 
to Dr. H.D. Bruner, the chairman of the committee, indicating that he could not concur with this report and that his name should be withdrawn from it. Further, if the report had been sent to anyone, he requested the AEC to write letters to those individuals, indicating that his name should be withdrawn simply because he could not concur. Moreover, Tamplin indicated that since the committee's conclusions were always so divergent from his own, he felt it incumbent upon himself to resign from it. Tamplin could, could only feel, excuse me, I'm going to start that again. Tamplin could only feel that his presence at the committee meetings merely lent credence to the facade. The first Apollo moon landing did not contain a snap reactor. The first snap reactor was included on the LEM in the second moon landing. This snap reactor is now on the moon and operating. Apollo 13, the third moon landing, also contained a SNAP-27 reactor. Of course, the mission of Apollo 13 was aborted, and the LEM, which contained the SNAP-27 system, re-entered the atmosphere. Tamplin, therefore, had sat on committees which reviewed the safety of these three SNAP reactors. He had been informed that the probabilities of failure and accidents were in the neighborhood of and less than one in a thousand. Of the three SNAP reactors considered, two of them resulted in accidents. Check that out. Of the three SNAP reactors considered, two of them resulted in accidents. Two out of three failures while the probability of such failures was supposedly less than one in a thousand. Arrogance. This is arrogance in extreme. God's sakes. So that means it's a two-thirds failure rate instead of one in ten thousand. That's outrageous. It is important. No, new subtitle. I'm sorry. Uh, the new subtitle is called Moon Landing Was an Engineering Disaster. Oh, joy. It is important to point out that it is important to point out one of the fallacies of the public's attitude towards the space program. The press has given the space program a great deal of play and an overabundance of praise. The landing of man on the moon had been likened to the significance to the birth of Christ. The truth of the matter is that the space program, the landing on the moon, was for the most part based upon technology that was available in 1959. The only reason we went to the moon was because the American public pumped $4 billion a year into that program. If one looks realistically at the space program in terms of the amount of money that was pumped into it, it was an engineering disaster. We must remember that three Apollo astronauts were incarcerated on the pad of the Kennedy Space Flight Center and that the Apollo 13 narrowly missed killing three others. But the, quote, success, unquote, of the space program has inflated the public's image of American science and technology. Many individuals feel that if we get into difficulty with our environment, our science and technology can save us. Don't you believe it? Our scientists and technologists are not even able to guarantee that they can perform the feats they have on drawing boards today. We should all consider carefully that science and scientists have very few answers and that science and scientists, for the most part, do not even know what are the appropriate questions to ask. So far, as the success of our technology is concerned, one should consider the fact that the Golden Gate Bridge is simply lucky to be standing across the San Francisco Bay. An engineer who helped to design the Golden Gate Bridge subsequently designed a similar type of bridge in the state of Washington. That bridge was literally blown down by the wind. And that is the end of this chapter, and we are now on Chapter 10, the Nuclear Weapons Program. Wow. Well, you guys, 
we're almost finished and I'm gonna uh, end here put your courage feet on we need to have some courage because the shit is beginning to hit the fan and um, it looks like the people that are controlling all this stuff they're gonna work really hard to try to convince the public that uh, radiation doesn't harm anyone I saw five stories last week that said that that uh, Fukushima has proved that radiation is pretty safe the denial, they're now calling the blob in the ocean the blob. How you like that? The blob. They named it the blob. Can you believe it? They actually named it the blob. That's how fucking journalists are reporting the plutonium plume from, from Fukushima. They're calling it the blob. This fucking country has gone insane. The world has gone insane. The people who are doing this are just completely insane. And so we're just going to have to reel them back in and bring them back to reality and sanity and, and humanity. And, you know, like help people get courage, put their courage feet on. That's why I say that. Like people need to change their attitudes, change your mind, change your attitude. We have the capacity to really make a difference. Our thoughts are things. What we think about happens. We can project the answers into the future. We don't have to know the answers right now. But we can believe that we'll find the answers. Part of what's happened is they have spent billions of dollars and decades attempting to lie to every single person on this planet. And that they're basically doing a quite effective job of it. But the reality is cracking the truth. They're, their truth. You know, the truth is beginning to get out. And unfortunately, Fukushima just drove us right off the, you know, um, Niagara Falls in a barrel, and we haven't hit the bottom yet, folks. So, anyways, I'll end here. <laughs> like I said, put your courage feet on. Bye.